guests, uh, I've invited you here today because you have a, an extended and long experience and, and career at Siemens when it comes to project management. And we'd like to pick your brains a little bit. And, and uh, I'm sure a lot of other people who in their companies right now are trying to establish a broader sense of project management and program management and portfolio management and maybe quality and risk and other things like that. They see that there's an integration there, this matrix organization that a lot of people talk about. We'd like to hear a little bit about your experience there. Um, also, maybe I think a lot of the people who will be listening uh, today will be saying, hey, listen, what tips and tricks, what are some of the lessons learned? Okay, do we, do it, Are PMOs still relevant? Do I need a PMO? So those would, would be some of the, the, the basic questions uh, that I would ask you. I will, I will mention this, though. When I first started working with, with Siemens, it was in 2000, right? And you said the the initiative at PM and Siemens began in 2003? No, it did not. Uh, it actually started. Maybe we should talk about yes. the start of PM yes, and yeah. Siemens. What was it, what was the the pain points or what kind of was the avalanche or what let the avalanche kind of slide down? I tell you frankly, I was not there. Okay. So, uh, but I can tell you, Siemens is an organization. You know, we celebrate 175 years mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. So um, we go back now 23 years mm -hmm. to the year 1999. Mm -hmm. And uh, Siemens has been in place basically all over the world mm -hmm. in almost 200 countries um, in very big divisions. Uh, it's a very heterogeneous company. And for those who I'm sure most people know Siemens, but just for, for, the, for the people who are listening, what are some of the business units or the direction that, uh, of products that, and services that Siemens offers? Well, we support uh, nowadays, yeah. Yeah, um, we support on the one hand uh, the industries in the digitalization mm -hmm. efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of our big uh, divisions is called digital industries. Mm -hmm. um, another big uh, big uh, part of our company is smart infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So everything uh, that goes with um, the electrification and, and the grid systems mm -hmm. and, and uh, supporting energy efficiency, mm -hmm. um, everything regarding electricity and electrical appliances in, 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 in buildings mm -hmm. and so is, is part of our portfolio. So we, life sciences is also part one of the things that you guys do, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and then we have, of course, our health uh, yeah. healthcare, uh, health in years. Uh, company now and we have our mobility yeah. company so everything around trains, uh, trains and yeah, train logistics. tracks ele electrifications mm -hmm. and so these are the major uh, major branches that uh, we are engaging mm -hmm. in um, that looked a bit different 23 years ago and mm -hmm. I bet it will look uh, much different in, yeah. in 23 years to come but um, so it is a very heterogeneous company um, and so with very different branches that they engage in. And there must have been that there was a board meeting where they said, well, it can't be that everybody invites project management on their own. We kind of need a bit of a, a structure. We need to know a little bit about yeah. our projects. And yes, at some point, we also had some big crisis in projects. Okay. Yeah? So, so a couple issues. went the wrong way, maybe. Yeah, they went south. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there was something to do, there was a task. The good thing is, and this is one of my first messages to give, it was the board who said, we want that. Mm -hmm. And that went in a way that one of the board members of Siemens globally became sponsor of this initiative <sighs> or program as it then developed. Yeah. And then they chose one of the top managers, the level below the board, uh, who was then the director of PM at Siemens. And he was one of the most experienced and most mature leaders uh, of an organization that engaged in gigantic projects, so mm -hmm. to speak. And that was the main setup around those two people. We started to build an organization. And then the first three years, this is why I only came in place in 2003, yeah. Um, the first focus was about finding out what exists there yeah. in the headquarters, yeah. so to speak. And so they were looking at all their branches and all their divisions here and then tried to create um, a, an organization of partners that uh, met, that exchanged and so on and, and started the first um, setup of our organization. We'll come to the setup a little bit later. Yeah. Let me let me let me interject now because what, what you're talking about is gold and I don't want you to, to miss it because as as somebody who's 
who's been a practitioner of project management for over 30 years, and I've been a consultant now for about 20. I've been exposed, I've had the, the luxury and the beauty of being able to ex- be exposed to wonderful companies where I, I get to learn. I don't just get to teach, but I also get to learn. I get to see their, their learning process. I get to participate in their lessons learned. And one of the things that I've always noticed, and I, and I still, when I advise companies today, I notice, is I'm, I'm shocked about the integration of project management from what I call um, the bottom to the top. Uh, maybe we can use Siemens as an example, because you said the initiative, the first pain points were identified in, in, in 1999, right? You've already said Siemens has a long history. So let me tell you something. I think we're, mm. we don't have to guess about this. Siemens has done, been doing project management for a lot longer than that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So let me ask you a question. How did Siemens manage those projects before there was a conscious awareness from the board? Well, that's actually difficult to answer. I would say the first big projects were done with the Siemens founding fathers. Mm-hmm. Yeah? They, they, they had a huge project building a telegraph line yeah, from, from Europe all the way to India. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Over thousands of miles. So a, a, a mega yeah? project. A mega project. Yeah. And when you think, um, as far as I remember, um, uh, the, the Siemens brothers were the project managers or the sub-project which is, managers. Which so is to classic. Speak. It's fantastic. If, if, yeah. I, I, what I always what I always tell my clients when they when we talk about sponsorship, a lot of people don't know what what's a sponsor good for. And I always ask, Do you have a project manager? Yes. Do you have a sponsor? They sometimes say, What's a sponsor? And I say, Well. It's somebody who authorizes, who guides, who supports, who links the strategy and the mission with the actual operations of the product, and also gives you immediate access to the powers that be, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and people say, well, okay, I understand what a sponsor is now. Um, who should be sponsoring? My standard answer that I give them is God, a God, or a demigod. And they always look at me, what do you mean? I said, it needs to be a board member or one level below. And this is a classic real life example the, this project was so important. The benefit of this project is that the Siemens brothers were involved, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So in, in the sense of making decisions, that there was no barriers. Yeah. And now imagine the following. Imagine uh, one sits in St. Petersburg, the other one sits somewhere in India, and then, then the third one somewhere else in the world, and they needed to communicate. Yeah. And the communication at that time went, I don't know, by horses, yeah, by yeah. ship and so on. Yeah. So uh, today it takes seconds to, to communicate with each other. Yeah? And... Um, the other thing which was very interesting is the impact that such a project had. Because when this telegraph line was there, the communication time reduced from something like two weeks down to approximately half an hour. So there was also a meaning behind what you do. Mm-hmm. And I think it's great to work for a company, and I'm very happy about that, that creates so many meaningful projects. Yeah? But coming back to today or, or to the no, question... I'm not going to let you off the hook yet. I, okay, I, okay. I'm gonna, because I'm going somewhere with this. So you give me you gave me a perfect example. Uh, we, we started in 1999, just to bring you back to yeah. what you said, where you said the board got involved. God bless the board. I love the board. Okay. Then I said, yeah, but there was project management before that. And you went right back to the board. I'm not letting you off the hook because my experience at Siemens, and I think you have this experience as well, is what happened between when the Siemens brothers did project management and 1999. There were literally thousands of projects that were managed by hundreds different, of hundreds of hundreds. thousands of projects managed by diff- different business units. And there's a, there's a strong history that I think one has to respect. Okay, And I think it's incredibly indicative of how maturity builds up in an organization, especially a large organization like Siemens. How many employees does Siemens have? Worldwide? Nowadays, about 300, 330. Only? 30, Only? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 330,000, yeah. A yeah, massive company yeah. represented all over the world. Your employees still had to manage projects. Maybe yes. not the, the, the India Telegram projects, but smaller projects. And I know this as a fact, and you know this as a fact. A lot of these business units said, well, we need a, some kind of process. And, and uh, Siemens has a long history that individual business units, individual uh, regions or countries said, okay, if we need project management and we don't have a god or a demigod telling us what to do, well, we have to decide it ourselves. Yes. And, and, and I, I, I'd love to hear from you a little bit, your feedback, because w- what I think is great, and I think a lot of organizations have this issue, is that in the absence mm. of board awareness, and I'm not speaking for Siemens, but I will speak for a lot of companies, I'm shocked how few board members in the world have any idea of what's going on in project management in their company. 
I've actually gone up to board members and I will say, how many projects do you have in your portfolio? And they look at me like I'm speaking a foreign language. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is is not the case at Siemens. You you board members at Siemens very well know how many projects they have. I'm what size? Pretty sure. Though. Yeah. What size those projects? What the total capital of investment of project is? What the target ROI? Which is what we're talking about portfolio. Now. I think. It, it, let's take PMI, which is the Project Management Institute. They have wonderful standards on everything, right? They have a they have the PENBAR guide. In the meantime, is this thick? You know how thick the standard on, on portfolio management is, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of yeah. an indication of the state of affairs. And I'm shocked because what I've always said for a high level of project management maturity. First place you start in maturity is you, your teams have to be able to do project management. And, and Siemens was good at grass. I always say project management is, often starts as a grassroot movement, right? If, if in absence of governance or, mm. or guidelines, people figure it out themselves, okay? But I think what, what I'd love to hear from you is Siemens had many, many decades of people doing their own thing. I think there, how many different standards were there at Siemens before 1999? I would say numerous numerous, numerous he's, uh, being, both, he's being conservative yeah no, well <laughs> both in the in the in, in our whole matrix yeah, organization yeah. yeah i would not even say that in a in a certain branch or organization headquarter and countries there was the same uh, methodology in place and that that is uh, of course true siemens has always been a mature company mm -hmm. siemens has always uh, had a very very high level of technical knowledge of, of as we call it ingenuity mm -hmm. as an engineering uh, spirit yeah and uh, but it was dependent on the single people on individual initiatives on the individual initiatives on the individual knowledge um, knowledge and experience that mm -hmm. had built up in our company and there was maybe I assume too little room to share and to also at a some some point exert governance mm -hmm. governance in the full blown um, full blown project management sense of the word well it was kind of i think also seen as an imposement i think i think your your board members were kind of proud of the fact you had highly professional highly motivated employees that were getting the business done and as long as that worked that was fine but what we're talking about, and this is why I'm so thrilled to have you here today, um, you get actually to share with us a little bit the, the Siemens experience that in 1999, I think there was a transition. Something went click in the brains of board members where they said, you know what? It's great that we have individual uh, project management systems, mm -hmm. but we're a large corporation. Where's the synergy? Where's the potential? Are we doing program management? Is there cross fruition between the business units? Mm -hmm. uh, what? How does it look? Do we have a uniform capability program? And the idea in the beginning, the goals in the beginning were to increase the quality of our mm -hmm. projects, to reduce the risks mm -hmm. in our projects, and to enhance the community of project management experts. Now, this realization came on a senior and an executive management level. Yes. And what they understood, and I, I wish more senior managers and executives would, would recognize this, I think they, they have it somewhere in their peripheral vision, but are they conscious of it is the question, is that they realized that although projects are executed by project teams, for projects to maximize their potential business case, projects programs and project portfolios require the involvement and the conscious decision making of senior management and executive management and i think that's that's missing in a lot of uh, companies so i'd like to hear let's get back to 1999 what was kind of the spark that that said okay where the board member said no we need to change this again it was uh, it, it was this understanding that there is no red threat yeah. for our project management and uh, there was, on the other hand, definitely uh, the expectation to find lots of good bits and pieces mm -hmm. that we need to bring together. And only in 2003, they started to organize, to, to, to establish a global organization. Mm -hmm. So in the, in, the, in the headquarters, we had... Which uh, is a challenge, the, the, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So we had a, a global organization in place that we still have in place mm -hmm. today. 
that uh, has in the divisions in our headquarters uh, the PM uh, coordinators uh, that has the coordinators in the countries and within the countries in the major branches. So and you, and you have the same processes. You speak the same language. And we now have the same process and speak the same language. And I was there towards the beginning and I saw how difficult it was to train this language. And I know how simple it is today um, because I still yeah. work in projects yeah. and I still uh, uh, support projects. Yeah. And when we talk about our PM40, PM80, so our milestones, yeah, your milestones. it's automatic. Yeah, everybody everybody yeah. knows what's, uh, what's it about. Yeah? What, what I always say when, when I train fundamentals, right? I often, I often say, listen, w it, when we go through the fundamentals, what we're going to go through is we're going to go through an arsenal. I use the word arsenal. We are going to go through an arsenal of vocabulary. Uh, we might also call it buzzword bingo or bullshit bingo, right? Lots of words like project charter, uh, so, uh, stakeholder, stakeholder analysis, risk register, uh, configuration management, where a lot of people say, what the hell are they talking about, right? Now, the ultimate purpose of good vocabulary, number one, is to, or two reasons, is to create an effective. So I can say, you can, you, you can mention your milestones like you mentioned, and, and the lights go on in people's eyes and they know what you're talking about. It saves you time. So it's effective and it's efficient. Um, unfortunately, I think we all have the experience in modern management that we often use vocabulary for other reasons. One, to intimidate people, to confuse people, or to impress people, right? Which is not the purpose of, of, of using this kind of vocabulary, right? So you, that was one of the targets when you, when you decided to make a project, to take project management not out of the hands of your different regions or different business units, but to, 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 to take it higher and say, okay, yes, we want you to continue doing project management, but are we doing it, do we have a uniform process, right? So...